Hello once again, it's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. And I'm starting a short series of videos here, just uh, two or three. I'm not sure how many videos it will take when I start a project. But I'm going to make another small drill press vise from aluminum castings, really based on my Peterson Products uh, vices. Now I know I've been producing a lot of videos on vices, and I guess maybe I should change my name to Vice Man. But I think somebody already took that name. But a vice, and there's many different kinds, are just it's just a perfect teaching tool because there's, there's so many different operations involved in the making of a vice. So I have here on the bench several castings and several uh, foundry patterns of the small drill press vise, so let's talk about that. Also, I fully understand that there's limited use for an aluminum vise, but we cannot cast cast iron, at least in my foundry, so I have to settle for aluminum, and that's what we did in the high school as well. So let's take a look at what I have here on the bench. To start with, this is one of the original large drill press vices based on Peterson products. I have none of the small drill press vices. I don't know if any examples still exist. I kind of doubt it. But nevertheless, this is the actual size of the small drill press vise that was about a two and a half compared to a four. Very similar in construction and design. Now I have done a series of videos showing um, the making of 3D printed patterns and here's one it wasn't very successful in here and I've had some problems with that but I made them in various sizes because that's what's so neat about 3d printing you know anywhere from uh, lar I could make it larger or smaller even so small that it could be a key fob but what I decided to do for this particular video is this size and the reason for that is I want to use various machinery in this video and the shaper is quite a small tool but I think I can manage to do some operations or at least one operation on this and it'll be about one and three eighths wide when I'm done and approximately four inches I'm not really following any dimensions it's, a lot of this is still in my head from 30 years ago and here's the little vice jaw as well. Now this casting had a problem, but that isn't going to hurt a thing because that'll all be milled out as a slot anyway, like this. And these vices were based upon the general design of Palmgren and other brands as far as the construction and even the original dimensions. This is my original brochure from 40 or 45 years ago showing that particular model, the number three small drill press vise, two and three eighths wide. This is a copy of the original drawing that I made in 1970 or 71. Again, I will not be following those dimensions, but just give you an idea of how it's constructed. I may change a little bit here how the screw is held into the jaw. I haven't decided yet. I'm trying to speed things up. I will not show all of the operations, but yet most of the operations, again, I'm trying to use a variety of different machine tools and techniques, some of which you haven't seen, some you have. I hope this meets with your approval, but I'm trying to speed up the pace of the videos, and after all, this is strictly for edutainment. No one will actually build one of these because you do not have castings or patterns. And one final thing before I go into the silent mode, as you know, all patterns are tapered. That is, they have pattern draft on them. That makes them difficult to hold because these two sides are not parallel. So I'm going to start, first of all, by machining the bottom true. I've already run the belt sander across it, but I'm going to true that up a little bit. And then I'm going to square up the sides, but probably not all the way, but at least a portion of it so that it can be held in a vise. If the taper is held in a vise to do some machining, it could very well pop out because it would only be pinching at several points. So that's just to give you an idea of the general things that I'm doing here. 
and then I'll get into the slotting and, and machine. Uh, so there is quite a bit of machining on this uh, part. The, really the only thing that is not machined are the two ends and right in here. It will be machined again on the sides after the jaw is in place. I haven't decided yet whether I'll use steel jaw plates, which we see in most vices and was indicated in the drawing, but uh, I don't know. I may or may not do that. It depend on how long the video is and if I run out of gas. I'm on the South Bend Shaper. Notice how the work is set up so that I'm cutting the long ways and the stroke and the speed of the stroke and the location of the stroke and so on is already set. Now understand that this is just a roughing cut. I could care less what the finish looks like and it's not very good because I intend to machine this again later on and this just squares it up about up to here on both sides. Probably could have taken a little more off on this side but now I'm ready to work on the bottom. Let's go down to the bridge port. That also would be a perfect job for the little closing horizontal mill, but the setup is quite uh, time consuming. Now I'm downstairs on the bridge port, and you see the little line there on each side. That shows about where it's going to fall into the vise because as I open this up here on the ends, I don't want to squeeze it and break it. That may not mean anything to you. But using the same parallel that I used out in the garage, I'm just going to lay that and there's no burrs or irregularities there, so it's just going to lay in there just like that. And I'm going to take this carbide uh, cutter and true up the bottom. And then I'm going to start on the slots. This is a 7 8 end mill. I'll take several passes till I get down to the depth and it cleans up. Again, I'm not going much by any dimensions. I just have this centered within the casting. On the jaw, this will be 9 16 approximately, so I have a 9 16 which is 0.562 end mill in the collet, and I will open up that slot from one end to the other until it breaks through. That's how I will determine the depth.
looking pretty good to this point. Of course, in uh, the Palmgren factory, they would have gang milled this. So it would have done both slots and the top in one pass, but a very expensive cutter setup for them. Well, now I want to mill this out in here. I'm just going to use that nice Niagara, uh, what is it, three quarter inch carbide. But uh, as I told you before, if I put this in the vise and gave it a good squeeze right here, for instance, setting like that, there would be a chance of breaking the casting, crushing it. It is only aluminum. So this upper slot, as I told you, is 7 8 And I just happen to have a parallel that fits in there pretty nicely. That would prevent that from happening. So I'm going to lay that. I've already got some uh, wavy parallels in here. So it won't interfere with this. So I think that'll be a good setup. Prevent disaster. And that will be the final finish in there. That will not get machined again. This didn't quite clean up, but I didn't really care. Actually, I didn't want it to clean up. If you take a look at a palm grin. A little deburring. But now I think I'll have a go at the movable jaw and machine it so that it will fit. Now this is kind of a funny casting because there's not a true surface on here other than this is fairly clean because I had belt sanded it but it still needs a, uh, a cut. Matter of fact everything on here needs a cut except perhaps this surface here where it says 562 which is the width right here. If you recall, I used a 9 16 end mill in here, but sometimes the slot ends up a slightly different dimension, but using a adjustable parallel here, I got just a little bit over, about 563, so I want to make this to fit. You know, it's tapered now, and I've already laid out a center line, so I've taken equal amount off of each side, and also I will mill these shoulders down at the same time to approximately the depth of what you see here on this layout line. Let's go back to the mill. Off camera I took a couple trial cuts here on what is really waste stock at the top and I got a pretty good fit there. I've already laid uh, the work on there and it does fit and I have taken readings on the digital readout and I've written down right here is what I need that's thirty thousandths on the right side and that's the one on the left side so now I'm going to increase the depth of cut until I come down onto the shoulder here and I'll, again I'm going to work up to that dimension you can't put the metal back on This of course needs to be trimmed, it's way too long, so just with a straight edge down there at the bottom, 
this is kind of a crude way. It can also be done with depth micrometers, but I'm just going to scribe it. And then I'll work up to that dimension. So that needs to be milled off. That's waste stock on the bottom. And I might also measure while I'm at it with the micrometer checking the thickness there. It's about 0.447. And then as I mill this down, I can use a depth micrometer right here and maybe make it 450. I need a little bit of play there so it doesn't lock up when I tighten the bottom piece, which looks something like that. Alright, I've got about 50 thousandths to take off yet. I'll do that in a couple passes and work up to it. Got a little bit of a burr there. Looks good. Now I will make the little bottom slide plate. This is just a piece of three quarter inch hot roll band iron that will be the slide plate. I've already laid out the holes. I'm going to use 832 screws. So I'll drill these out the clearance size and then transfer them. This is just a little narrower than the slot. It was always a struggle if you made this exactly the same size as the slot. So it'll go in there about like that. Now when you tighten those up, the jaw should still slide freely. And I've got a real good fit. You're going to have to have just a little bit of slop and play. Or it will trouble you later on. And that was a very, very difficult thing for the kids to do. To get that dimension there that I used uh, to measure. I used a uh, depth micrometer to measure it. Really has to be right on the nostril. And there's very little play this way, but yet you will see that there's always play in commercially made ones. There has to be. They're fighting tolerances also with semi-skilled workers. Well, that's just about enough fun for today. Tomorrow I will continue by making the screw and then drilling and tapping this hole and drilling it on into the jaw and then the final operation will be milling all of it smooth and 